Enjoy and take care. At the movie's beginning, we see a person named Gulliver, who wakes up and follows his daily routine. He talks to his superhero toys and jovially takes a shower. Gulliver works in the mailroom division of a newspaper company in New York. One day he meets and befriends a new employee named Dan. Gulliver is boss to Dan in the mailing department as he is senior to him. While the two were delivering their mail, they come across Gulliver's longtime admirer and a journalist named Darcy Silverman. Gulliver used to love her for a long time, but he did not confess to her till now. After that day Dan brings notice to Gulliver and informs him that he has been promoted to the department's head. On the other hand, Gulliver has been working in the office for 10 years, yet no one respects him and promotion was out of reach for him. Gulliver is informed by Dane that he'll never progress in life since he is always hesitant of speaking with those around him. Feeling sad, Gulliver comes out and notices Darcy still working. With full courage, he approaches Darcy to confess his love, instead, he picks a random paper. Darcy inquires if he is interested in applying for a travel writing assignment. Gulliver, who is nervous, agrees and must produce a travel article the next day. While at home, he copies and pastes various articles from the internet for the blog. He presents it to Darcy the next day at work, after seeing his work she gets very impressed by his writing abilities and assigns him a new task. She wants him to visit the Bermuda Triangle and write an article about the stories surrounding the strange disappearance of ships there. Gulliver agrees just to impress her. Darcy sets him up with a contact and a boat. The next day, Gulliver flies to Bermuda, where he is picked up by a man. Gulliver is taken to a leased boat, where he is shown how to operate it. As the boat is mechanized, the ride looks smooth. Gulliver eventually sets off alone for the Bermuda Triangle. Initially, he spends some of his time reading how to make a robot magazines and drinking several cans of Coke. He falls asleep quickly and when he wakes up, he sees a gigantic wave in front of him some hours later. The boat shakes severely in the water as the sea storm hits. A huge tornado sucks him along with his boat and the screen goes blank. Gulliver looks immovable when he first opens his eyes. He suddenly notices some little men standing on the top of his chest when he looks down. The chief introduces himself as Commander Edward Edwardian of the Lilliput. A group of little people have gathered around Gulliver as the camera zooms out. With the use of tiny ropes and pieces of wood, he is held down. Later the commander calls Gulliver, a beast, suddenly in utter confusion Gulliver frees himself from the bondage and stands up. He closes his eyes as he feels that he is seeing a dream. General orders his men to bring him down, and then the soldiers pull Gulliver with the help of hooks attached to their ropes, finally making him fall unconscious. Later he is tied to a cart and is taken to present before the king. All the citizens of the kingdom come out to watch the beast in curiosity. Gulliver is presented before the Lilliput King Theodore, but his daughter Princess Mary develops sympathy towards Gulliver and asks Edward why is he handled so harshly. Edward declares to her that Gulliver is a spy from the enemy province Blefuchia. Finally, Gulliver asks the king where am I? The king's secretary Jinx tells him that he is in the kingdom of Lilliput, the greatest nation on earth. In the next scene, we see Gulliver confined in a cave. There he meets a guy named Horatio. Gulliver inquires about the reason for his confinement, Horatio informs him that Edward imprisoned him due to his courtship with the princess. General Edward overhears Gulliver when he is referred to as a lame-ass. He threatens to imprison Gulliver for his entire life if he doesn't tell the meaning of lame-ass. Gulliver tells the general that lame-ass means a wise guy. Feeling satisfied, the general takes Gulliver to plow the fields with his power, while he is controlled by a machine. Suddenly. We hear two bell rings from the palace, signaling that Blefuchia has launched its invasion. They ignite a fire at the palace and attempt to abduct Princess Mary. As he wants to be the one to save the princess, Edward hurriedly runs to the palace and commands everyone not to save her. Horatio pleads with Gulliver to save princess as Edward can't get to her in time. Gulliver takes down the troops from Blefuchia with ease and saves the princess. The king and his secretary, however, are trapped in the flames. Gulliver relieves himself on the palace in a hurry. When he puts out the fire and saves King Theodore, everyone applauds him. In exchange for Gulliver's valor, the king releases him and Horatio from prison. 
He also invites everyone for a feast at night to honor the event. Edward is enraged to witness another person being lauded for their bravery. Gulliver replies that he is from Manhattan when the king asks him where he is from during the feast. The people assume that Gulliver was chosen as the president of Manhattan as he is the strongest one there. For the first time in his life, Gulliver feels as if he is a hero, so he makes up the legend that he was once referred to as President the Awesome. Except for Edward, everyone accepts his claim. The following day, the residents of Lilliput construct a huge residence for Gulliver that includes all the amenities he was unable to get in New York. He shows them the drama of the sinking Titanic and declares to everyone that it is his true story. This makes everyone astounded after knowing his tragic life. Edward asks how he was saved after drowning. Gulliver responds that he was revived. Later Horatio takes the help of Gulliver to impress the princess and finally succeeds in his endeavor. On the other hand, Edward also claims that he is the only person who has the right to court the princess and he wants to marry the princess, even though she was not interested in him. Somewhere else the soldiers discover the wrecked boat of Gulliver. Later he picks up his phone and notices that it received 12 voice messages from Darcy. She seems to be very furious at him, now she has to take his place and travel to Bermuda, and she has found out about his plagiarism and now hates him. Gulliver couldn't face her in this situation and decides to stay in the Lilliput kingdom forever. This makes Edward very dissatisfied and informs the king that he suspects Gulliver. On the other hand, Gulliver is made the new general of Lilliput. Edward shuts down its defense system as an act of revenge for Gulliver's treatment. Sensing the opportunity, the kingdom of Blefuscia invades Lilliput. Being appointed as the new general of Lilliput, Gulliver is now responsible to defend the kingdom of Lilliput. He nervously enters the arena and splashes the water, whereas the enemy attacks him with cannonballs, but it does not do any harm to him. He overruns the invading armada with ease and ends up saving the kingdom. Several soldiers are appointed to give haircuts and massages to him. On the other hand, the princess also rejects Edward's courtship. An enraged Edward joins hands with the enemy king. He further asks the help of the enemy king to build a huge robot with the help of the magazine that he got from Gulliver's boat. The Lilliput kingdom is invaded by Blefuscian army once more. Gulliver gets ready to face tiny enemy soldiers, but he is shocked when he sees a massive robot being operated by Edward. He is challenged to a duel by Edward. Gulliver is left with no choice but to accept. The robot is far stronger than he is, despite his attempt to push it. Gulliver is forced to concede defeat after being picked up by his pants. Additionally, Gulliver admits that everything he asserted about being the president was false. The betrayal by him surprises both the king and the princess. As a form of retribution, Edward banishes Gulliver to a place called the island where we dare not go. When Gulliver reaches the island, a huge little girl captures him. Now Gulliver is on an island, where the people are even bigger than him. The little girl thinks of Gulliver as a toy and keeps him in a Barbie's home. In the meantime, Darcy also reaches the kingdom of Lilliput searching for Gulliver. Edward recognizes Darcy and imprisons her because Gulliver had informed everyone that she was his princess back home. She encounters King Theodore and his queen in the prison, they have been held captive after Gulliver's defeat. When Horatio notices this, he makes the decision to meet Gulliver and informs him of everything. That little girl also had a skeleton of a deceased American Air Force pilot. Gulliver escapes and returns to Lilliput using a parachute. He immediately meets Darcy and expresses his love for her. Now Gulliver firmly decides to challenge Edward, not for proving his bravery but to save the people of Lilliput. The next day, they both get ready for a duel. Gulliver is quickly defeated by Edward. Horatio sneaks into the robot to help Gulliver and defeats Edward from inside. He cuts the power cable of the robot and this makes Gulliver very easy to defeat the robot. The audience erupts in applause, and even Darcy rejoices with his success. Horatio is given permission to court Princess Mary as a result of his bravery. They ultimately share a kiss. The princess is taken hostage by Edward, who has now become completely insane, but she eventually has had enough of the traitor and beats him in anger. Darcy for the first time kisses Gulliver and he successfully contributes in bringing peace between the two island kingdoms, ending their rivalry. Finally,